So your Ledger Nano X has arrived and you're excited to set it up? Well, we're excited to show you how. Welcome back to Woodland Pools. Today, we're gonna take a look at how to set up the Ledger Nano X from scratch. We'll go through the entire process from literally unboxing it to adding your favorite cryptocurrencies. If this is your first hardware wallet, it can seem a little bit intimidating, but don't worry, it's actually a really straightforward process. Let's jump in. All right, so let's start off by getting this plastic off of here. So this thing just slides right out like this. Okay, so let's open this thing up. So inside of here, we have our actual ledger. So let's go ahead and pull that out. We'll set that aside. And if you pull this out, underneath here, you've got your little welcome booklet, your USB cable that you're gonna use to connect your ledger to your computer. And inside of here, this is really important, we've got a getting started guide, we have some regulatory stuff, we have some stickers, but in the back here, these are the important ones. These three pieces of paper is where you're gonna write down your recovery phrase. We'll get to this in a minute, but this is really, really important. So let's set all of this aside. Let's open up our ledger. We'll go ahead and plug it in and we'll switch to our overhead camera. Okay, so we can pull this plastic off and then go ahead and plug in your USB-C cable. We see that it turns on and it says, welcome to Ledger Nano X, press the right button to continue. So let's go ahead and press the right button. So we need to download Ledger Live at ledger.com slash start and then we'll press this right button. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we are here at ledger.com slash start. From here is where we're going to download Ledger Live. So Ledger Live is the user interface that you're going to use to be able to interact with all the different cryptocurrencies that are going to be managed by your ledger. And also don't forget that your funds also don't even live on your ledger. Your funds live on the distributed blockchain that you use, whether it's Bitcoin or Cardano or Ethereum. But what the ledger is doing is it's securely storing for you your private keys in a way that's impossible to be hacked. And that way only you can ever sign transactions and broadcast it to that network and have those funds moved between the addresses that correspond to you. If you're still unsure of how private and public keys work and where your funds actually live, definitely check out our video where we dive into that and cover it in a lot more detail. So let's go ahead and download Ledger Live. Click on download, then select your operating system. Once you've downloaded and installed it, then go ahead and open up Ledger Live. All right, so once we've got Ledger Live open, let's come back to our device. We went to ledger.com slash start, and then we press the right button. So we're gonna use these two buttons to navigate back and forth, left and right. If we need to select something, we press both buttons at the same time. So let's continue on. At any time, we can hold down both buttons at the same time, and that'll take us to the control center where we can power off and do some other things. But great, so now we've opened up Ledger Live. That'll help us through the setup, and we're going to set up as a new device. So let's come back to Ledger Live, and let's click on Get Started. Okay, you should read through the terms of use and then enter the Ledger app. Select what device we have. We have the Ledger Nano X, but for all three, this would be the exact same process. So we'll select the Ledger Nano X. And now here, we want to set up a new Ledger Nano X. Keep in mind that if you're using this ledger as a backup and you want to restore one, you can use this restore method. And we have a separate video on that, but today we're going to set up a new Ledger Nano X. So let's click on that. And this is exactly what we were talking about before. Our crypto assets are stored on the blockchain, not on the ledger, but you need a private key to access and manage them. We can own our own private keys, the notion of not your keys, not your coins. This will be ours and here and nobody can ever hack it. It's stored within the Nano. We're the only ones that own it and the only ones in control of our own money. And this is the whole idea of a cold storage wallet. This means that it never exposes your private key online, even when you're using the app. Ledger uses a state-of-the-art technology called a secure element, where the part of the actual device that interacts with Ledger Live is totally separate from the part that manages the private and public keys. And that secure element that manages those keys, all it does is hand off a signed signature saying, yep, that was that person. But the secure element itself is never online ever. Ledger Live is what we use to validate our transactions to buy and sell, but we'll still sign those transactions on the ledger itself. So let's go ahead and set up this ledger. Let's do this. Okay, so here's how we're gonna get started. You need about 30 minutes or so. Grab a pen to write with. Make sure you are alone and you're in a quiet environment with nobody around you. And you're gonna want your three different pieces of paper to write down your recovery phrase. So let's say, okay, I am ready. Now we're gonna be looking at Ledger Live and the device. And when you're using a hardware wallet, you have to get used to looking at both at the same time. So we're gonna make sure we follow the instructions on the app at every step, got it. All right, so we've turned on our Nano. We've browsed through the instructions up to this point. We're gonna set up as a new device. And then we're gonna come back here when we get to this step about entering the pin code. So let's go ahead and set up as new device. And we're going to press both buttons to confirm. And now we need to choose a four to eight digit pin. So let's click on this next step here. Your pin code is the first layer of security. It physically 
automatically secures access to your private key and your nano. The pin code must be four to eight digits long. Okay, I understand that I must choose my pin code myself and keep it private. So let's set up that pin code. So go ahead and select a four to eight digit pin. Once you've entered at least four digits, you'll see you've got a little check mark here that you can choose from. And if you made a mistake, this one's kind of hard to see, but it's this symbol right here. It's a little backspace character. So if I press both, I can always backspace if I want to change it. But if I'm happy with the selection I made for my pin, I'll press both buttons and confirm. And now it's going to ask me to confirm the pin and type it in again. So go ahead and type in your pin one more time and confirm it again. All right, so now it's time to write down our recovery phrase. Let's continue the next step here. Okay, so now this is the most important part of the whole process. As we mentioned earlier, your private keys live on your Nano, and that is what validates that it is you making the transactions whenever you're trying to broadcast a new transaction to whatever blockchain you're trying to interact with. But the way that those private keys are generated is directly from the recovery phrase you're about to write down. So it's critically important that you understand that if you were to lose your Nano for any reason, you can always just get one of the copies of your recovery phrase, get a replacement Ledger Nano X, use the recovery phrase, put it in restore mode and get an exact duplicate of all the same public and private keys and you'll have immediate access back to your funds. But that also means that if anybody else was to get access to your recovery phrase, they also can order their own Ledger Nano X, type in your recovery phrase and get full access to all of your funds. So the bare minimum you're gonna want to do is write it down three times and keep it in three separate secure locations. But if you wanna take it one step further, instead of writing it down on paper, you can also use a crypto steel capsule or a crypto steel cassette. And if you're interested in that extra layer of security, check out our video where we compare the two. But for now, let's go ahead and work with the pieces of paper and we'll write down our recovery phrase here. So your Nano generates a unique recovery phrase every time. Ledger does not keep a copy of it. The only time this specific recovery phrase will ever be shown to anyone ever is to you right now. So we need to check off here that I understand that if I lose this recovery phrase, I will not be able to access my crypto in case I lose access to my Nano and nobody, including Ledger, can ever give you a copy of this recovery phrase again. So let's go to the recovery phrase step. Okay, so we're going to take our three different pieces of paper. We're going to write down the words that we get. You can see the pieces of paper are numbered from 1 to 24. And this is important. Make sure that you're careful for both the order of the words and the spelling. We've had multiple times people have reached out and said, my recovery phrase didn't work and my wallet is empty. And every single time we've had someone reach out with that problem, it turns out they made a typo or they couldn't read their own handwriting. So take your time, write it nice and clear on the three different pieces of paper in the exact order that it's presented to you. Okay, so here we are. We're going to write down our recovery phrase. So let's confirm by pressing both buttons. The device will generate this 24 word recovery phrase. It is the only backup to restore our accounts if needed. We're gonna write it down on our recovery sheet in the correct order, and we're gonna press both buttons to continue. So here's what it'll look like when it shows you the recovery phrase. Go ahead and write down all 24 words in order on your three pieces of paper. We'll do the same and then we'll continue from there. All right, so once we've written down our 24 words, we'll click on next step and now it's time to confirm the recovery phrase back to the device okay so we're ready to verify our words and make sure we got them correct so let's press both buttons to continue all right so let's confirm our recovery phrase press both buttons to continue so now what it's going to do is it's going to show us a few different options for each word and we need to select which is the correct one so for ours our first word was pig so we'll select that our second word was balance so we'll select that our third word was garden so yeah so keep going like this through all 24 words and confirm them back to the device and what the Nano's doing under the hood is it's going to generate a signature from the 24 words that it gave you and then to generate another signature from the 24 words that you repeated back and compare the two and if they match it knows that you got it correctly so go ahead and finish all 24 words we'll do the same and then we'll continue from there okay so your recovery phrase is set keep it in a secure place if lost or stolen all of your assets will be lost never share it with anyone no one from ledger or any legitimate wallet manufacturer will ever ask you for your recovery phrase because with the recovery phrase they can steal all of your funds and press both buttons to continue. All right, the device is ready. Cool. So let's continue on Ledger Live here and we will click next step. Hide your recovery phrase. Never share it with anyone. Enter these words in a hardware wallet only. Never on computers or smartphones. Okay, I am done. All right, game on. So let's see how much we learned here. We're going to have to take a little quiz. Let's see how we do. Okay, so this is what we talked about a couple of times. As a Ledger user, your crypto is stored where? That's right, on the blockchain, not on your Nano. Your crypto is always stored on the blockchain. Your hardware wallet only holds the private key, which gives you access to that crypto. Next question. If your recovery phrase is no longer secure or private, is it no problem, Ledger can send you a new one, or your crypto is no longer safe and you need to transfer it to a secure place? That's right, your crypto is no longer safe. Anybody can now take all of your funds by restoring a wallet with your recovery phrase. Next question. When you connect your Nano to the Ledger app, your private key is still offline or is it briefly connected to the internet? 
That's right, it's still offline. The secure element is never connected to the internet ever. Great, so let's finish the quiz. Hey, look at this, we're already a pro. We're ready to safely manage our crypto. One quick step left, let's click on next step. So they're gonna verify to make sure the Nano is genuine. So this should be pretty straightforward. So let's click on check my Nano. So on the device, we need to allow the Ledger Manager. So let's click both buttons to confirm. All good, and we got confetti, fantastic. The Ledger Nano X is genuine and ready to use with Ledger Live. So let's click on continue. All right, so when we get into Ledger Live, if if you have a firmware update available, go ahead and do that first before anything else. That way you make sure that when you're trying to interact with any of the blockchains, you have the latest up to date of everything. So let's go to manager. Okay, cool. So it's pulled up our firmware update here. This is a great thing to keep in mind. Anytime you're doing a firmware update, you want to make sure that you still have access to your 24 word recovery phrase because sometimes when you're doing a firmware update, if the device itself crashes, you want to make sure you have a way you can restore your device back. So we just wrote it down. So we have our recovery phrase. Here's just the stuff that changed in the latest version. We have it, so we're going to continue. And great, so now let it go through the firmware update process and then we'll continue from there. Okay, so we see we have new firmware for version 202. So we'll click on our right button here and we'll click both to confirm the update. All right, we'll let that go. And once this reboots, we're gonna have to enter our pin again and then we can move forward from there. All right, firmware has been updated. We can now install apps on the device. So let's click on install apps and let's allow Ledger Manager on the device. Okay, great, so on the Ledger, the way that they do it is for you to manage your crypto, they have different specific apps for each of the different cryptocurrencies. So let's go ahead and install a few. We can install Bitcoin, let's do Ethereum, and let's also do Cardano. All right, so let's let those three install. We can see on the device our Bitcoin app has gotten installed, and we can see Ethereum and Cardano as well. So go ahead and add the apps for all the different cryptocurrencies you're planning on managing. And another one that I would recommend for everyone to add is called Recovery Check. So you can do a search here. The idea of recovery check is that it's a great way for you to confirm that the recovery phrase that you wrote down is the same one that was used to create the private keys on your device. What'll happen is exactly the same way as when we set up the device the first time, you open up recovery check, you type in your recovery phrase, it will generate a signature, it'll compare it to the private key that is stored on the device and it'll make sure that they match. And that way you can be sure that the recovery phrase that you're using is the one that can regenerate all of your accounts again. It's just a nice peace of mind. So that's just a nice one to have that you might wanna consider. So we've installed the different apps to manage our different cryptocurrencies, but now we need to add accounts for those apps. So let's go ahead and add some accounts. We'll click on add account. And for our first one here, we'll do Bitcoin. Let's click on continue. On the device, we're gonna confirm and open the Bitcoin app. So Bitcoin is ready on the device. We're just waiting on Ledger Live. Great. So it's synchronizing. So for your account, you can call this whatever you want. And for the address type, it's native SegWit. This is the fastest and cheapest kind of account you can do for Bitcoin. If you need to see the other account types for Bitcoin, you can click on this little slider and you can see the legacy address versions. And if you're curious about the difference between these, we have a video that digs into it, but for pretty much everybody, native SegWit should be fine. So let's go ahead and add the account. Great, so our Bitcoin account has been added successfully and now we can add accounts for our other cryptos. So go ahead and do that for your other cryptocurrencies as well. We're gonna go ahead and add Cardano. It's gonna ask us to open the Cardano app app, synchronizing. Okay, we can just call this Cardano, add account. All right, great. Okay, so now that we've added some accounts, if we go to accounts, we can see we have our Cardano and our Bitcoin account. Okay, so home stretch, we're almost there. Now we just need to take our funds off of the exchange or off of our software wallets and move them onto our hardware wallets. So we'll show how to do that with Cardano as an example. I'm gonna click on Cardano so you can buy some from their third party partner, but what we're trying to do is we want to actually receive our own funds from a different account that we have on an exchange or a different wallet. So let's click on receive. We want to receive it to this account. We only have one account, so that's fine. Click continue. Okay, so this is the address that we're going to send these funds to. We and you can verify it on the device. You wanna make sure to always verify that the address that's reflected on the device is the same one that you're seeing on the screen. So now that we have the address that we're gonna receive our funds to, we're gonna click and copy that address. And then from there, you're gonna to go to your exchange or your software wallet, wherever it is you have these funds, and you're gonna send your funds from there to this address. Keep in mind you're gonna to need to do this process for each of your different cryptocurrencies because each blockchain has a unique different kind of address. So we're gonna do an example and show for Cardano, but you'll do the same thing for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and whatever other cryptocurrencies. So we'll copy our address. Here we have a sample wallet, it just has 34 ADA in it. We're gonna click on send. For the receive address, we're gonna paste in that address that we just got from Ledger Live. Now I recommend if you're new to this process, and especially if you have a lot of funds to send over, start off by just doing a test transaction with whatever is the minimum amount that you're allowed to send. Send that test transaction 
make sure it went through the way you expected, build up a little bit of confidence in this whole process. And then once it goes through, then you can send the balance. So we're just gonna send one ADA just to start. And all right, so that's submitting. So let's go ahead and give this a chance to come through. And this may take some time depending on the blockchain, the exchange or the wallet that you're using. But when this does go through, you'll see your Ledger Live automatically update with those funds. Okay, so once your test transaction has come through successfully, you can go ahead and send the balance of your funds. We'll do the same and we'll continue from there. Fantastic, so our funds have arrived. If I click back on account here, I can see that I now have my 10 ADA on my Cardano wallet. My Bitcoin wallet is still empty. If I want to send my Bitcoin over, I'll just go through the same process, click on receive, get my Bitcoin address, send a test transaction, send the balance, and then we'll be good to go. If you are using Cardano, you can now send and receive ADA straight from Ledger Live, which is super exciting. But if you want to take full advantage of the Cardano blockchain and do things like staking or delegating to your preferred stake pool and getting ADA in rewards risk-free, then you'll probably need to use a third-party wallet for that. In our next video, we'll show you how to get one of those community wallets installed so that you can manage your Ledger funds, but be able to take full advantage of the Cardano blockchain. And congratulations, you are now fully in charge of your own private keys, which means they are your keys and your coins. Give yourself a pat in the back, really big step. Let us know how the setup went for you, and if nothing else, we'll see you in the next video.